we're going to speak about a man by the name of Thomas Moray that I have a profound respect for. Um, I've studied his work and it's, it's just exhilarating what this researcher has done. Um, another scalar energy or what he would call himself perhaps a radiant energy uh, theorist and inventor, what he discovered was incredible. But it, it's the usual hurdles. Um, great inventors who are, are visited with derision and great inventors and great discoveries that have not yet been realized and have not yet been properly embraced and, and nurtured and, and to, the, to the detriment of mankind. And for those of you who are new to our radio call, we work with people by way of photographs. I'm holding a photograph of myself. Now, how does this work? We work remotely with photographs. 100% of the time, we work with photographs of people, animals, even plants. Well, it's believed that a photograph carries your signature, your light signature. So we, we never work with a person, an animal, or a plant. We always work with photographs. Now, what does that mean? It means that your photograph is your copy or that you could buy locate How about that? You could buy locate you could stay where you're at in your living room. And if you sent your photograph to me, then you could buy locate into my laboratory. And I know that sounds uh, futuristic, but it's real and it's, it's with us right now. It's, it's reality. And we've made this uh, a very successful scalar light session by way of photographs. So this opens up the door to a new and emerging science. That's what scalar energy is. It's a new and emerging science in which you do not have to be physically present. You can send your photograph to us and we work remotely by way of your photograph. Now we have discovered that a photograph carries your signature. It carries your, your soul, your mind, and your body on the photograph. And a photograph uh, essentially uh, has a, a current, a, a present state uh, accounting of your, uh, of your soul, mind, and body. In other words, at the present moment, we can tune into you by way of your photograph and we can send you energy by way of your photograph. So everything we do is remote by way of a person's photograph. And one of the functions that we've been able to perfect is working with a photograph. We can detect uh, germs, viruses, bacteria, fungi on a photograph. And we send energy into that photograph and we're able to manipulate viruses, bacteria, and fungi inside the photograph, incorporated on the photograph. And we're able to change the molecular character. We're actually able to unbind to negate molecular bonds on the photograph. And again, your photograph obviously is a representation of you. It's an energetic representation of you. And so we have found that working remotely with a photograph, that there is a congruence with your actual person, that the photograph represents you. So this really gives, gives credence to the theory of bilocation. You could be in two places at once because a scalar energy force field is everywhere. And by accessing your force field on a photograph, well, then we, we can send that energy into a photograph that ev eventually connects to you as a, as a human being. It's quite profound. It's never been proven. And why hasn't it been proven? Because it's, it's an emerging science and, and we don't have any way to, to measure this energy, or I don't have any way to show the actual connection between a photograph and a person. But many of you who've been on our program, you feel better. Why do you feel better? Because we do indeed send energy to your photograph that has some type of connection with you. Okay, so in, in, a, in a thumbnail sketch, that's what we're doing with scalar energy. I've devoted my career to this science. And one of the reasons I've devoted my career to this emerging science scalar energy is I've been enthralled with many inventors. And one of them, his name is Thomas Moray, and he's our, our center of discussion tonight, Thomas Moray. He was a, um, a researcher from the state of Utah. He's deceased, he died in 1974. But what he achieved was just incredible. And we're going to go over some of his discoveries. 
and you will find this entertaining and quite educational. But there's a common theme here, people. Even though this technology is so advanced, and even though this technology could pr provide such benefit to mankind, even in his day, back in the 30s and 40s and 50s, Thomas Moray was either ignored or um, he met with opposition. Now, it's a common theme, and we have to be very candid about this. Why are these great inventors, these great scientists met with opposition? Because invention, because these, these technologies, the, these discoveries are a threat to the military industrial complex, okay? It's about money and power with, with some people. And these inventions are a threat to the military industrial complex. Okay, so before I get collective group, whether from government, business, or even academia, no group has ever helped me. It's always been people like yourself. Now, I, I'm not bashful uh, as to what I can do, nor have these other scientists been bashful as to what they can do. Why the backlash? Why the lack of, of interest? You know, I, I see uh, videos on YouTube that go viral. And these, these are, um, um, perhaps entertaining videos, but they're really of, of little merit. What I have to say tonight and what my predecessor, Moray, has accomplished is of great merit. So why is it that we're not getting the, the publicity? Where is YouTube? Where is Facebook? Where are the newspapers? Where's the media? It's suppression. Now, if you've been in my shoes for the past 40 years, you would say that without equivocation. And that's what I'm saying. <clears throat> These are great inventions. These are great discoveries. Why isn't this being promulgated? We have the means, we have social media. I'm not bashful. Well, be because there's a backlash as to what I'm doing. There's a backlash to what other scientists have done. And it's a shame because uh, the world suffers because of that. If we look around and we look at modern day invention, <clears throat> it's changed the world. And look what technology has done for us. It's changed our lifestyle for the better. Well, um, that's what I'm trying to do. And that's the technology that I've discovered and what I am unabashedly presenting every Thursday night to the world and, and on our website and on other radio podcasts. So what am I saying? In, in so many words, thank you all for being part of this grassroots movement. This will succeed. It will succeed because of you, because of your effort, okay? And you are the people that are going to, to bring this to the fore. Don't, don't depend upon those aforesaid groups. They're not gonna help us. Okay, so without further ado, I'll get into our discussion tonight. Um, does anybody have any questions before we go there? Now you can raise your hand in several ways. You can go down to the bottom in the participants tab, and then you will see raise hand. That's one way that we can see. And as long as nobody's speaking, you can feel free to unmute yourself and open your line. Or you can type a question to everyone in the chat box. And I'll see that and get that answered for you. Or you can send it to me privately and I can ask the question anonymously for you. Several different ways for you to do that. And I'm going to uh, also mention to you, um, during this pandemic, we've been receiving um, photographs from around the world. This is a collage, okay? I receive collages like this all the time from around the world. Now, this is from a, a village in, in uh, Africa. And I've been receiving collages from, from Africa, from India, Mexico, um, some of these people just don't have the means for, to pay for sessions, so we treat them pro bono. And the good news is the, these villages that I've been, been working with by way of their photograph, we don't see an outbreak of COVID-19. Okay? We are working with people on a daily basis and, and the people that we're working with are not uh, succumbing to this virus. Okay? So that's the good news and that, that's something we wanna share with people around the world that that we have a, a broad-based study now, so to speak. It's a, it's a loose study, but still I, I consider it an advance. And with that, people around the world, Europe, Asia, Latin America, et cetera, North America, we're working with people around the world. And during this pandemic, those people are healthy. Um, not one of, of our subscribers is, 
ever reported that they had to be rushed to the hospital and placed on a ventilator. So keep that in mind. And, and that's our success rate thus far during this pandemic. So you, you uh, derive what conclusion you want from that. That's up to you. Thomas Morey, uh, a great inventor. He lived in Utah. Um, lived in Utah, uh, <clears throat> was a Mormon. And as a youngster, he was always interested in, in invention. <clears throat> he traveled to Sweden uh, and studied uh, electrical engineering and received a doctorate in uh, Sweden and, uh, and really blossomed uh, during that time um, as a missionary student, if you will, in Sweden for the Mormon church. And during his travel to Sweden, he came across a, a stone. It was some type of crystal stone. And he believed that that stone could be used to power an energy device. He called it the Swedish stone, the Swedish stone. So when he came back to the United States, he, he started to experiment with this Swedish stone. And lo and behold, he built instruments, scalar energy instruments. And he was able to incorporate this Swedish stone with this, this uh, uh, self-design with this invention of his. And he found that this crystalline stone uh, served to potentiate, served to give, a great, give off a great deal of energy, of power. Here's one of his, his schematics. Okay. He called his invention, amongst other things, the Moray valve, M-O-R-A-Y, Moray valve. Uh, he named it after himself, obviously, the Moray valve. And with this invention, he was able to illuminate or at least power objects. So he had, if you will, what we call radiant energy, abundant energy. And I'm going to pause the screen. This is Moray's invention. Now, he's demonstrating in his laboratory in Salt Lake City <clears throat> that this invention, if you can see this carefully, um, there's a table and a top surmounting that table is a group of light bulbs. Can you see my cursor? All of those light bulbs are now illuminated. Am I coming in clear, Sandra? Uh -oh. Sorry, I was muted, but yes, you're fine. Okay, okay, yeah. uh, all right. So my point is this, those light bulbs are not plugged into anything. This is uh, Moray with his invention. He has spectators and he's illuminating light bulbs with this, this invention of his. Again, he, sometimes he calls it the Moray valve. Well, to demonstrate this uh, in, a, in a setting away from any electrical wires or, or any um, what I would call ambient energy from any electrical outlet, many times Moray would demonstrate this device out in the country. And in so doing, he would take this uh, device uh, far away from any electrical lines um, out in the country, and he was able to harness the uh, ambient, the, the uh, energy in the local environment, and he was able to power light bulbs. And he just fascinated people. So what is this? Well, some people might call this a free energy device. Okay? This is his invention in which he could easily capture energy from the atmosphere and use it to power light bulbs. Now imagine if we had this today, people, you, would, you and I would not be paying an electrical bill. Okay? It's, a, it's an invention is rather simple. And he was able to extract energy from the air, so to speak, from the atmosphere. So this is where we're going with these type of inventions. And I, I just want to give this man all the credit in the world, although he, for the most part, worked alone in his life, and he really never had the, the, the blessing and the help from, from, from other scientists. No, nonetheless, he, he achieved so much during his lifetime. Do, Dr. Thomas Moray. Now I'm going to show you another photograph in which he was working at his laboratory in Salt Lake City. And this is an antenna on top of his laboratory, if you can see that. And this antenna could capture energy from the air, from the atmosphere, and he could uh, use that energy. We, he would um, 
it would travel down this, this rod into his laboratory and he could power anything in his laboratory. So instead of having to hook up to a, a substation, instead of having to pay for power at a power station, he simply had this antenna atop his laboratory in Salt Lake City. And he, for years, he powered his laboratory by this means. Now this is free energy and it's well documented. Now you would say to yourself, well, wonderful. This is just as great news. You know, why wasn't the media all over this? Why, why did this man, Thomas Moray, have any help? And, and he had, again, demonstrated this instrument hundreds of times. And every time without fail, he could extract energy from the air, from the atmosphere. Well, it's, it's rather apparent to me why he was never helped because this invention would have made obsolete the, the power companies. Um, there was one time that he invited the senator from the state of Utah. And the senator at that time saw his work. And he was really um, impressed, but the senator said he, he could not intervene because he mentioned that the government's job was not to, not to um, in any way, interfere with the public utilities companies. So in deference of the monopoly, in deference of the, the, um, the military industrial complex, his name was uh, Senator Reed Smoot of Utah, even though Moray demonstrated this free energy device, the Senator turned him down. Well, that goes to show people in this case with this politician, this Senator in Utah, that the senator was not interested in the American people, that the senator um, was, was more interested in protecting the, the military industrial complex. You know, if, if somebody showed me a free energy device, I hope I can develop one someday, I would promulgate this around the world. And that's what we should be doing with inventors like this man, Thomas Morey. But, you know, not, not to, not to, uh, beat the drum too many times here. This is the world that we live in, people. So hopefully what we're doing with, with scalar energy and our attempt to improve the human condition, hopefully we will have an audience someday and we will be able with our small grassroots effort, with our small group of people, we will be able to change the world. And I again, I just have to accentuate that it's us, everybody on this phone call, this, this, uh, this uh, podcast tonight, it, we are the ones who are going to change the world. And uh, I, I rely upon the people. Two days ago, somebody approached me and they said, Tom, why don't you write for a grant? And uh, there's a group out of Europe that might grant you some money. And then I looked into their terms and conditions and and I found out that this group is really not interested in, in helping this uh, advanced society. This is a, a venture capital group. Now, why, why would I turn down venture capital? Well, I'm not doing this for money and I don't want this to become a monopoly. So if you will, I, I have to keep this at a grassroots level. I, I do not wanna be beholden to a government or, or to big business. So th these are my thoughts and I'm very frank and, and with you tonight as I always am, I'm candid. And I, I, again, I salute all of you people who've been with us over the years. Okay, here's another uh, <clears throat> Moray device and, and Moray is demonstrating that <clears throat> he can power these light bulbs. These, I know the, the picture is poor quality, but what I'm pointing to is a group of, of light bulbs that are illuminated in his laboratory. You could see to the very uh, left, a circular fan. Now this fan is on, it's, it's operating with free electricity, so to speak. And at the very front, the forefront is an, a garment iron, that's a hand iron. And the iron is, is functioning and it is now demonstrating that it is a hot iron. So with this free energy device, Moray has powered the Garmin iron, the circular fan, 
and this, this row of light bulbs, okay? All done by way of this free energy device. And now he's, he's demonstrated this hundreds upon hundreds of times to people. And you know, the evidence is, is incontrovertible. Um, he would also, uh, again, go out into the country away from any electrical wires, uh, away from any, any uh, uh, suggestion that he was extracting energy from electrical wires or from a, a substation. And, and out in the country, this device, this free energy device would work it's simply by harnessing the ambient energy all around us. He, he, he even, Moray, at times would even challenge people to take apart the device and then they would reassemble the device. And with that, the device would still function and would provide free energy. Well, as time went on, um, uh, Moray was employed by uh, various groups, various scientific groups. Um, he developed um, uh, vacuum tubes. He was, um, um, working in the radio industry. He, he was very talented. And he developed a, a radio, a, a, what he calls a radiant receiver, some type of a, a special scalar energy radio in which he could eavesdrop on conversations of people a half a mile, a mile away. In other words, this, this radio receiver could pick up conversations of people in the neighborhood or a mile or two down the road. It, it was reported that one time he overheard a conversation at a railroad station, which was five miles from his house. And he actually heard the conductor say, all aboard. And this, this radio device could pick up conversations of people five miles away. And the clarity was incredible. There's another time that Moray was able to use his device, his radio device, and from the state of Utah, he could pick up the conversation of Admiral Byrd in the Antarctic. Now, I wanted you to consider what I just said. At that time, there were no satellites, so you could not triangulate a signal. So the Moray um, radio device could pick up, um, um, if you will, radio signals in Antarctica. Now, how does that, how's that possible? Because scalar energy can travel through the earth. So you did not need a group of satellites to hear somebody uh, by way of a radio transmission. Now consider what I'm saying. If Moray developed a radio that could pick up a, a conversation or a radio broadcast in the South Pole in the Antarctic. And if Moray could hear Admiral Byrd in Little America in, in Antarctic, that means that the radio signal traveled from Utah through the earth to the South Pole, to Little America in Antarctic. And indeed that, that story has been corroborated by a number of people. Now, what does that mean to us? Well, we don't need satellites in the future. If you want to pick up a radio station or if you want to send a cell phone signal, you don't need satellites. You don't need substations. You don't need transformers. You just broadcast scalar energy and scalar energy will pass through the earth. Now, again, these great inventions have gone by the wayside because the, even though God is giving these men and women great intellect and great ability, um, we're not listening to them, okay? No matter how many times Moray would de describe his invention or demonstrate it, uh, people just didn't get it. They, they, they just did not get it. Okay, so this is some of the work of Thomas Moray and, and, um, and to, to further uh, exemplify the difficulties that he had as an inventor, he tried to present his work to the, uh, at that time, the rural, rural electrification industry. And this is the, the uh, industry at that time that was trying to provide electricity to, to rural parts to the country, to the countryside of Utah. But he was met with um, 
uh, with this group in, in Utah, he was met with derision and, and he f later discovered that some of these people in, in this agency, the, the rural electrification uh, agency, that they were communist sympathizers. And he, he believes, Moray believes that, that this agency was eventually uh, uh, infiltrated by, by not only communist sympathizers, but perhaps by Russian agents. And ultimately, Moray was approached by Russian agents. And um, these Russian agents told Moray that the government of Russia wanted his work and they wanted to induce him somehow to, to either sell the invention or, or to share his knowledge so that the Russian government could, could benefit from, from his invention. But being a good and decent patriotic man, Moray never sold out. He never sold out. Well, apparently there was a, a, an episode that um, this one of these communist sympathizers um, was in his laboratory in, in Salt Lake City. And back in 1939, he smashed the instrument that this communist sympathizer, um, out of frustration, took a hammer to this device, this Moray device. And uh, uh, throughout his life, he, he was... Um, he, he was persecuted. There was one time that Moray was leaving his laboratory and he was shot and uh, somebody shot him in the leg. So uh, these are some of the, uh, some of the uh, uh, hurdles that Moray had to overcome in his life. You know, not only did he have to uh, convince people that he had incontrovertible evidence that radi radiant energy was indeed um, there and that radiant energy could be used and, and harnessed to to the benefit of mankind. Nonetheless, um, again, it, his work fell on deaf ears many times. Um, um, even the senator, as I mentioned, of Utah was not inclined to work with him. And uh, uh, ultimately, later in his career, um, there was communist infiltration in which Russian uh, uh, spies tried to steal his invention. Well, um, th this is sad, but notwithstanding all of this difficulty, Moray continued on, and he tried to convince the world that his inventions were valid. And after hundreds upon hundreds of demonstrations, um, it really got nowhere because the, the powers that be never helped him. They never helped him. Okay. And um, as he lamented later um, in his days, and, and as he was close to death, Moray said, why, did, why would, did I not receive the help that I wanted? He was ready to give this away to mankind. He did not want to make money at this. So this is the story of this great inventor, Thomas Moray. Um, if, you've, if you're so inclined, just look in, into some of his works. I, I've read um, his book, The Sea of Energy, just fascinating what he's discovered. Um, just, just a brilliant man, a brilliant career. And hopefully someday we can resurrect his efforts. Hopefully someday we can say yes with, with, with great assurity that what he achieved is, is going to change the world and we have to revisit his work. Now, let me once again go back to this one slide of Moray demonstrating how he can illuminate light bulbs and give power to a circular fan and give power to an, to an iron, excuse me, to a garment iron and doing all of this um, with this free energy device that uh, simply picks up this ambient energy, again, the circular fan, the garment iron and the row of, uh, light bulbs all under the influence of this this moray valve this instrument that is a free energy device okay that concludes my talk and my delivery tonight about this great scientist thomas moray um, i hope this piques your curiosity again you know uh, imagine having a radio receiver that could pick up um, the conversation of, of people at the South Pole and do so with great clarity, okay? Without the need of, of satellites, without the need of any 
telephone wires, so to speak, or, or any type of uh, transmission. Again, scalar energy can pass right through the earth. So in the future, we will have cell phones that can be used um, and we could, we could easily make a cell phone call to anybody in the world and that signal would pass through the earth. You would not have to triangulate that. You would not have to bounce that signal off of, of satellites. Um, imagine that role that's coming. And that's, that's some of the, the work, some of this, what I would call this, this uh, groundbreaking research of, of uh, Thomas Morey. Yes, Susie. I always have a question. Um, I got here late, so was there a name for his, was this radionics or? It, he called it the Morey valve, M-O-R-A-Y, Morey valve. Um, he, he was, um, by trade, he was an electrical engineer. He started with electrical engineering, but he discovered what he called the sea of energy or radiant energy, which I believe was scalar energy. And I've always contended that there's two energies, electricity, electromagnetic energy, and scalar energy. And again, what, what really piqued my curiosity when I first started to study Thomas Morey, there's hundreds of demonstrations. He was not quiet about this, okay? You know, again, he even gave the senator from Utah a demonstration. And uh, it's incontrovertible. This was a free energy device. He could power uh, household appliances with this device. Why aren't we using it today? All we'd have to do is just duplicate it. Well, it, it becomes rather evident. I've mentioned this so many times. We have test results from around the world, test results that show that we're working with people and we're able to eradicate pathogens. Here's a test result. Okay, this person at one time had Epstein-Barr. And we have hundreds upon hundreds of test results proving that scalar energy can negate viruses, okay? Now, it's obviously simple, easy. It's, it's a painless session. And all you have to do is once again, send us a photograph, right? Again, if you're new to us tonight, this is my photograph. I work with people remotely by way of a photograph. There are no in-person sessions. I take your photograph and I place it in an instrument. And just like the Moray valve, if Moray can send a signal or pick up a signal from Antarctica, I could send a scalar energy signal to somebody at, a, at um, McMurdo, uh, the army base in the South Pole. The point being is what, what Moray has achieved by way of his device, I have achieved by way of the scalar energy device in which we can pass signals directly through the world. Now, I frequently work with people in Asia who are, I live in, in, on the East Coast. And when I'm doing that, then I'm obviously sending energy directly through the earth. Now, my predecessor, a man by the name of Hieronymus was able to work with astronauts, was able to work with the Apollo 11 astronauts while they were orbiting the moon. So a scalar energy device can send a radio signal to Antarctica or if you're Dr. Hieronymus, you can send a scalar energy signal to the moon while the Apollo 11 astronauts are orbiting the moon. Just incredible. And imagine how this free energy will, will serve to liberate mankind. And so many people complain that it's expensive. Energy generation is expensive. Well, Thomas Morey had free energy devices. Now, if, if we all had these free energy devices, we could power our homes and we could have an antenna on our car. And instead of using oil, okay, gas, for, to, to have a combustion engine, we would just have an antenna that would capture this ambient energy. It's all been done before. This is suppressed technology. And I know that this time around that the world will see the merit of scalar energy. They'll see, the world will see my, the merit of my work and the work of other scientists because th there's too much, um, there's too much uh, what I would call social media behind us. Um, we have the internet and we have people who have um, the ability to, to help promulgate this, this science. We have people who, who really wanna change the world. Whereas people like Tesla and Moray, there was no internet back then, okay? They were isolated. Moray lived for most of his life in, 
in Utah, although he traveled extensively and, and, and he presented his work extensively, nonetheless, these men did not have the internet. Thank God I have the internet, which I guess segues into my next topic. And let me digress for a minute. I'm trying to open up people, a branch in Europe. I'm going to um, hopefully within the next two, three months have uh, websites in Europe. I'm going to start in the United Kingdom. So if any of you have any advertising experience in Europe, contact me. I need help to get this information out there. You know, our message has, has been um, sufficiently promulgated in the United States and Canada. But what's on my radar next year, 2021, will be Europe. I want to get the message out to Europe. And we're going to start by creating websites in Europe. And I also have a... Um, a uh, a advertising agency in Europe that's going to help us. Okay, so that's just a, a, a side note. Any other questions? A any questions about Moray or about our sessions? So one more part of that. So his uh, and I'm sorry, I was late. I it's yeah. a long story, but um, so his device, his Moray valve, was a, did produce electricity, not scalar uh, energy. I, but you know not, I. Very good. I think both. I think both. Take a good look at this, this photograph. Now, you could see on the bottom here, that's, if you see my cursor, that's an electrical fan. And it's, it's being powered by electricity. So it appears that he could pick up ambient energy. In this case, it was electricity because these are electrical devices. That's an electrical fan that's operating. Here is an iron that's being operated by uh, electricity and the, uh, the light bulbs are being powered by electricity. So it appears that <clears throat> he was able to harness both electricity and in the case of Admiral Byrd picking up the, the signal of Admiral Byrd and Little America at the substation, at the station, I should say, in Antarctica, um, I would say that that was scalar energy because scalar energy passes through the earth, whereas electricity does not. So I believe um, Thomas Moray was able to harness both free electricity and free scalar energy grid of the universe. And he's able to extract electricity to power those devices. Mm -hmm. All right. But the day is coming. And, and, and the good news is, again, we have the internet. We have people who are like-minded. Um, things are changing. I, I could not have done this. None of you would have heard of us. 50 years ago, there was no internet. Why are we having this conversation tonight? It's the internet. It's an invention. It's a podcast. It's by way of our computers. We didn't have computers 50, 60 years ago. So you can't stop progress. Eventually, this, this progress will, will bear fruit. And these great men that, that I've learned from, you know, <clears throat> we're standing on their shoulders. I'm standing on their shoulders. God bless them all. They're, I'm not going to let their legacy die. And what they've done, they've they've paid they they paid their their way. They've paved the foundation. They've laid the, the foundation. We'll, we'll get him the recognition that. He I just had a question. Uh, my name's Carol. Yes. Does does this does this have anything to do with? Have you heard of zero point energy boxes? Uh, I will, I don't have not heard of the zero point energy boxes, but the term zero point, uh, I'll give you a loose definition of zero point. Scientists have found that at absolute zero, okay, absolute zero, it's like 273 degrees below zero Kelvin. At absolute zero, <clears throat> you still have activity. There's still type, some type of motion. So in other words, there is molecular agitation even at absolute zero. And many of Many scientists have said, and I agree with them, that there has to be some unseen force that's, that allows matter to still vibrate, to still experience some type of vibrational uh, essence at absolute zero. Well, I say it's scalar energy, okay? No matter how cold or no matter how, how remote, and, and Moray concluded with this, is that the vacuum of space is filled with energy. You can't stop it. And scalar energy is everywhere. So um, 
the term is used rather loosely today. Zero point energy could refer to scalar energy. If that's your definition of it, then scalar energy is everywhere. And regardless of the vacuum, regardless of the temperature, regardless of, of um, whether it's, it's close to the sun or whether it's inert, you still have uh, scalar energy everywhere. It's, it's ubiquitous. Scalar energy is universal. You cannot stop it. Scalar energy is in, is in every nook and cranny of the universe. Thank you. Yes. Answered questions. I don't want to belabor this. That's all I really have to say tonight. Again, I want to thank everybody for your attendance tonight.